You have two rigid, well-insulated tanks, and they're connected by a valve. Tank, call it tank A, has a volume of one cubic meter and is initially filled with nitrogen at this temperature pressure. And tank B, the second tank, has three kilograms of oxygen at some temperature 75 C and 300 kilopascal. The valve is opened and the gases are allowed to mix. So determine the molar analysis of the final mixture. So they're asked to calculate what is Y, the molar mole fraction of the first gas, N2, and Y of O2 in our mixture, true? So two parts to the first question. And then calculate the final temperature of the mixture. So let's say T2 of the mixture. And the final pressure, P2. Use constant specific heats with these values for oxygen and nitrogen. So we'll set up our little illustration to help us organize our results or our solution. So we have tank A and tank A and tank B. Tank A is initially filled with nitrogen and B with oxygen, pure oxygen, pure nitrogen. The volume of A, tank A, is equal to one cubic meter. Do they tell us the volume of tank B? No. The second thing is the mass they tell us in tank B, and that's three kilograms, but they don't tell us the mass in tank A initially. And then uh, the temperature in tank A initially is 40 degrees C, true, and that's 313 Kelvin. The temperature in tank B initially, if you want to put a TA1 and TB1, it's initially 75 degrees C, which is 348 Kelvin. And the pressure in tank A initially is 150 kPa. And the pressure in tank B initially is equal to 300 kPa. It's not a trivial matter to introduce subscripts to help you organize results. One thing, this mass in tank A initial and the mass in tank B initial is given, but this is also the mass of N2. And because there's no reaction, at the final state, N2, that mass is dispersed between the two tanks. It's well mixed, but it's, it's conserved. Likewise, this is the mass of O2. There's no reaction in the process, that mixing process, after this valve is opened. But we want to know final mass of O2, well, it'll be three kilograms. It'll just be well mixed. Okay. So how, what's the strategy for solving this problem? I recommend table to help organize the results. So uh, we'll start with a table where we have uh, the gas nitrogen and the gas oxygen. And we probably are going to need the molar mass. So might as well put that 28.01 and 32.00 kilograms per kilomole. And then start listing things almost as you had uh, were given them. So the volume occupied by the nitrogen initially was one cubic meter. But we don't know the volume occupied by the oxygen initially, but we do know the mass in kilograms. The mass of the oxygen was three kilograms, but we don't know the mass of the nit nitrogen. Okay, keep going. Uh, the temperature uh, initial was uh, 313, and the temperature initial was 348 for the oxygen, and the pressure initial 150, and 300 kilopascal. So this is Kelvin. This is kilopascal. All right. At this point, let me ask the number of moles, kilomole. Can we calculate the number of moles of oxygen? Yeah. 
So it's going to be the mass divided by the molar mass, which is 32. True? And so when we calculate that, we, use, we calculate the number of moles of the oxygen to be 0 0.093754 kilomoles. All right. How about this? Can I calculate, knowing the volume of the tank, the temperature and the pressure of tank A, can I calculate the number of moles of nitrogen? And what equation would we use? That PV is equal to NR bar T. The temperature, the gas constant, the volume, and the pressure. So we can calculate the number of moles occupied. So let's go ahead and calculate the number of moles of nitrogen. 0 0.057642. Now you can go back and you can get the mass of the nitrogen if you'd like. So you take the number of moles and you multiply by the molar mass, 28.01, and you find the total number of uh, with the mass to be 1.6147 with some extra digits. You could also calculate the volume occupied by the uh, oxygen, true? You go back to the ideal gas equation, V is the unknown, and you know the other ones, and you calculate that this is 0.9042 cubic meters. If you sum this up, you know that's the total volume occupied by the mixture of oxygen and nitrogen, because they're, they're rigid tanks, they didn't expand. If you sum this up, what do we get? We get the total mass, true? So that would be 4.6147. If you sum this up, you get the total amount in kilomoles, 0 0.151395. Okay, we want to calculate the mole fractions. So knowing the amount in this column right here, we can calculate the mole fractions. So for the nitrogen, it's 0 0.057642 divided by the 0.151395, true? And that comes right at 38.1%. And then it's 61.9% for the, for the oxygen. So here's our answer for part A. I won't rewrite it, but there's the answer for part A, okay? For part B now, what is the final mixture temperature? Well, what principle are we going to use? First law, right? Right? First law. So what we have is the, uh, that you write the first law for the, the, the system, which is this right here. Our system is the insides of the tanks. And there's negligible volume in the little pipe connecting them and the valve connecting them, so we ignore it. And uh, we have initial state uh, where they're pure nitrogen in tank A, pure oxygen in tank B, final state where it's mixed. Okay, so the first law for that process is U2 minus U1 is equal to Q1 to 2 minus work 1 to 2. Is there any heat transfer with the surroundings? No. Now, there's some heat transfer from the warmer oxygen to the cooler nitrogen so that they're well mixed in one temperature at the final state. But there's no heat transfer from the system to the surroundings. Is there any work? No. And so the change in internal energy is just zero. You expand it, and you can get the contribution from the oxygen and the nitrogen. So the mass of the nitrogen, C sub V of the nitrogen. Um, let me not put too many subscripts. Mass, specific heat, final temperature minus the initial temperature, and... I guess I need to put everywhere the, the, the initial temperature of the nitrogen, the specific heat constant volume of the nitrogen, and the mass of the nitrogen. You add to it, 
the mass of the oxygen, C sub V of the oxygen, T2 minus T1 of the oxygen. Does that equation make sense? And so we know the initial temperature. We know the specific heats they're given. We calculated the masses. The only unknown is T2. And it's the same value right here and right here. So you calculate T2. And when we calculate T2, we find that it comes right in at a value of 63.6 degrees C. One equation, one unknown. All right. What about the pressure, the final pressure? How we calculate the final pressure? Could do that. Uh, but just go back to this equation right here. Uh, and you just say at final state 2, knowing the total volume and the total number of moles and the final temperature, you have to make sure it's in Kelvin. So you calculate P2 is equal to N, the total N right here, R bar, 8.314, T2, which is uh, 273 plus this temperature of 63.6, divided by V2, and this is the total volume, right? 1.9042. And when you calculate that final pressure, it comes right in at 223 kPa.